listeners and subscribers. Where the heck have you been? <laughs> I know, I know, shame on me, right? I dropped off the map and I took a bit of a hiatus. Goals change, life's change, right? And it's not that I didn't want to get back here before now. I'm just in much need for system upgrades. And now, because of this pandemic, my wife is working from home, so changes would be made to production schedules regardless, all right? But at least for now, I'm back. In a limited capacity, mind you, but back nonetheless. Anyway, I just thought, with everything going on, that I'd highlight some of the things I feel deserve a little bit more attention. I think that they've been neglected, because the future of our country is more important than any of the covid feelings on this pandemic, and that's what it is. But let's face it, if you don't care about rights, freedoms, uh, rationality, and logic, this content is likely not for you. Because if you think safety trumps civil liberties, uh, this content just isn't for you, okay? Because the tragedy isn't just that people are dying, it's that we're letting our freedoms die alongside with them, okay? That's the real tragedy. People, they seem to have no appreciation for the implications or even hypothetical implications of how these catalyzing scenarios seem to unfold, okay? And these scenarios, they always generate shockwaves, whether it be uh, death, rarely precedented angst and uncertainty, threats to rights and freedoms, okay? It's our job and has always been our job as a people to ensure that these shock waves, okay, are wisely and responsibly mitigated. It was owed to the American people uh, an approach that balanced civil liberties with public safety. The long-term economic impacts with the short-term casualties and to maintain diligence against those who would seek crisis is any opportunity for corruption or tyranny, okay? And if we don't think that that exists today, We've deluded ourselves. We, we've absolutely deluded ourselves. So this was owed to the people through enforcement by the people. But instead, we panicked. Okay, We gave away our hand. We revealed our hand and opted to show the enemy that we're willing to simply acquiesce and await the next recommendation from the CDC or task force, right? The actor Trump goes up there every day and, you know, makes his recommendations. And these recommendations are made for us by, you know, not just agents of the state, but public ridicule and peer pressure. That's where the the crux of this comes from. I mean, ultimately, there's more civilians than there is law enforcement, and it's the sheeple keeping sheep in line. We don't even need the sheepdog anymore. I've made the point before. Now, that being said, I do think that most people would at least admit that there are those in power, both known and those unknown who rule by secrecy, who do not have the people's best interest at heart, the low people in high places, okay? But they actually don't understand that fact, the people, okay? People have been deceived into believing mandates are always made for their own good, their best interest, and therefore they're manipulated into wanting them. And, you know, myself, I'm an advocate for freedom. Far be it for me to make a stink about what the people want. But if this is what the people want, does this bode well for future prospects, especially in a country like America, okay? Because regardless of what we think of the coronavirus, this pandemic has affected more people on a scale that few, if any, have ever seen or experienced, okay? We have absolutely set course on a trajectory of a new normal, and that should go without saying, because here we are, still in the midst of this de facto medical martial law. So these are indeed unprecedented times. Yes, that's what everybody keeps saying, right? Unprecedented times, unprecedented times. But that's because our rights, liberties, economy, and spirit of freedom are being eroded in unprecedented ways, okay? And that, my friends, is far more dangerous than any virus. See, I think we can choose to be worried and panicked, or we can choose to be wise and balanced, and we have not demonstrated the latter. Our response to this challenge is not balance civil liberties and public health, like I said, and that's what the American people deserved, okay? To be crowd and shamed, uh, made prisoners in our own home, endure lockdowns, curfews, National Guard's checkpoints, even permission slips to go to work. I had a permission slip to go to work. We're tracking and surveilling citizens. Google and Apple just got together, right? And by our silence is how we tacitly consent to this, okay? Because if we do not speak up now, there will come a time when we cannot speak up later. So just where do we draw a line, right? Do we really think this is a justified response? And would we still think so if I told you the numbers aren't a true reflection of what's actually happening? That's what people tend to point to, the infection numbers and the death rates, which have been skewed, okay? Because people's response to this has been more emotional than rational or logical. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I was hinting at there in the beginning. And if the infection numbers and death rates are a hinge for that, then there's something you might need to know, okay? Now, I know for the vast majority of people, if they don't care about the freedoms and everything I said and I just outlined, uh, this isn't going to be for them. But 
for those of you who are paying attention, and for those of you who do care. Uh, it was in the month of April, okay? New York added, I think it was 4,000 deaths from COVID to their official counts. And the problem with these deaths in this official number being added to their counts is that these were unconfirmed, suspected only deaths, okay? 4,000. That's entirely irresponsible. And I don't think they're the only ones doing that, all right? Now, not to mention that out of the gate for the coronavirus testing, they have been flawed at almost every single level. And that is not me saying that. It's the experts, it's the scientists, it's the media, you know, your Washington Post and the uh, scientists initially involved with this debacle. Because if you paid attention, initially COVID testing had rendered false positive and negative results, but due to the pressure for testing, these kits continued to be rolled out anyway, which completely invalidates a huge portion of the initial test results for, uh, was it the US, Spain, the UK, and others, uh, Britain was another one. Okay, this is why the death and infection rate projections and models are constantly failing short of estimates. That's because they're based on the inaccurate counts. We had an influx of inaccurate positives and a, a slew of inaccurate negatives, so we really don't have a hold on what the numbers actually look like they're likely far less than what's being talked about. We accuse China of underreporting their cases. And this merit alone, we're probably overreporting them, okay? And guess what? There's still problems with these testings, okay? Now, most people heard about the 17-month-year-old kid that tested positive for COVID, right? But how many of you heard that that same child tested negative at a second lab? or the poor guy who tested negative and then ended up testing positive only for it to be too late, all right? And these are not outliers. So again, by the merit of faulty, uh, faulty testing alone, we have artificially high COVID numbers, both sick and dead, period. But that doesn't change that people are indeed dying from the virus, right? And that is a tragedy. But again, it's not the only tragedy unfolded by this bug. So if we look at the number of infected around the world. It's reaching two and a half, three million, okay, which is, again is, is not a real number, but there's already roughly 25 million people in the U.S. out of work. That's more people out of work in the U.S. alone than there are sick or dead from COVID around the world. Just, you know, take a minute to think about that. And that's just the economic impact of this in one country. Okay, there's still the loss of rights and freedoms, the pacification of the people, and draconian authoritarian measures being rolled out like never before. Indeed, unprecedented times. And if you think governments are justified in doing anything, well, then, my friends, enjoy the new world order. Because what you think and what you believe controls what you act and do, right? So if you give up a little freedom for a little safety or security, you're deserving of neither and will lose both. We are losing both because it's either dangerous freedom or peaceful slavery. And that's why it's so important that we push back against those who would coerce or manipulate us into actions we'd never take on our own, such as wearing face masks in public, being prisoners in our own homes. Uh, the list goes on, being crowd shamed or crowd shaming others. This is what we're talking about. Now, make no mistake, these things happen in sagas, okay? It was a 1905 court ruling that made it possible to forcibly inject a vaccination to curtail the smallpox outbreak. And after H1N1, a law was passed that allowed employers to screen employees for temperatures at will during a pandemic and even send them home. So we had H1N1 uh, regulations adapted for the COVID outbreak, okay? And again, these are not outliers. In fact, there are even laws currently in place that allow for parts of the Constitution to be suspended entirely in an effort to combat an array of akin scenarios, okay? The question is, what regulatory power will this pandemic continue to yield to those seeking to exploit the people under the guise of peace and safety? Because let's make no mistake about it, it's the permanent solutions for temporary problems that linger, the oppressive and freedom-restricting measures that tend to stay in place even when the given scenario has come and gone gun control, forced vaccinations, limits on freedom of speech on certain outlets and platforms. The list literally goes on. The coronavirus just seems like yet another saga to get people to rally behind giving up their rights and freedoms. The right to assemble has essentially been decimated with, you know, no more than 10 people to a crowd mandate. Uh, it's the fear contagion that's taken hold, okay? Because when there's conflict or fear, the people become mentally malleable, ripe for state-sanctioned narratives that never really quite appear as they are tight, as they'd like us to believe they are, okay? I think most rational, logical people can see that. But again, that's why I made the preface in the beginning there. Because after all, this is the 
attention economy we're talking about, okay? Keep your attention on X so it isn't on Y, and don't you dare think about even looking at Z, all right? Anyway, we'll probably get way more into this later. I'll be doing videos. You know, the gloves are off now, okay? Uh, and my hiatus, uh, well, it's over now. Ultimately, I will not be posting as regularly here on YouTube, unfortunately, but I will be making videos, okay? Don't worry. I'm leaving all my content up and just probably won't be posting much anymore. But like I said, that's for another time. California Carter, signing off. Thank you.